Hi, I'm Dr. Amy Robbins, and welcome to Life, Death, and the Space Between podcast. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and medium, and here we explore life, death, consciousness, and what it all means. Today on the show, I have Teresa Chung. Teresa is a Sunday Times bestselling author in the field of spirituality, heaven, the science of the paranormal, and the afterlife. Born into a family of spiritualists, she has over two decades experience, both personal and professional, boasting a master's degree in theology and English from King's College, Cambridge. Teresa has had her work featured in the Daily Mail, most recently with her latest book, The Premonition Code, and bestsellers, Answers from Heaven. She has also been in the, new, the newspaper's dream expert, interviewed by Russell Brand on his podcast, Under the Skin, and in the Sunday Mirror, The Daily Express, Good Morning Britain, and Talk Radio, among others. So today I have Teresa here discussing her book, The Premonition Code. Welcome, Teresa. Oh, thank you very much for having me. Delighted to be here. So today we're going to talk, so this is going to be a two-part series in on my podcast on premonitions and precognitions, sparked by a viewer who reached out to me to share some of her stories, and clearly she had had some premonitions, and it got me curious, what's this all about? I started Googling, and the first thing that came up was your and Dr. Mossbridge's book, and so... You are clearly the expert on this, so I'm excited to have you here to talk about it. Oh, well, I'm excited to be here, too. It's um, a huge topic. <laughs> so can you start by talking to me about the difference between a precognition versus a premonition? Because I know sometimes they're used interchangeably, but there is a slight difference between them. Basically, it's all the same. It's the ability to sense or know or see what's in the future. Precognition tends to be in dreams, precognitive dreaming. A premonition ha tends to happen maybe when you're awake. That's maybe the, the difference that I would say. But people, the terms merge um, for lots of people. So in our book, we tend to use the, the term pre, pre premonition to refer to everything. But if you want to be clinical about it, there are subtle differences. Um, like intuition. A lot of people ask me the difference between intuition and precognition. What is the difference? Well, intuition is more a kind of a sense of of, 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 the, of of using the information you have of, of, in your environment to sense what is most likely to happen next or what you feel is going to happen. Whereas a precognition or a premonition is a clear vision of a future that there's no way your current circumstances can tell you that's going to happen. Um, it's not just guesswork. It's, it's a glimpse of the future in powerful dreams, powerful visions that you just know something's going to happen and it does, or you see it in your mind's eye happening. Okay. And so how did your research come about with Dr. Mossbridge? Oh, long story. Well, I've been writing about people who have paranormal experiences, um, you know, afterlife encounters or visions or near death experiences for about 20 years now. I've done lots of story collections of anecdotal stories of people who have been touched by the paranormal or believe in the paranormal or strange and unusual events. And what I got frustrated of is that um, although I have a, a background, an academic background, I have a uh, I have a degree from King's Cambridge. The, the the criticism, first of all, is where is the science? And mm -hmm. up until recently, I wasn't able to point to much. It was basically, well, the science is in the anecdotal, the witness statements. I mean, in a court of law, you have a witness and their statement is used as evidence. That's all I said. It's about belief. And I used to say, well, it's about belief, whether you believe or not. But then I began to delve a bit deeper and I began to find that there are actually scientists out there really leading the way and researching what consciousness is and paranormal abilities. And I came across a place called the Institute of Noetic Sciences, um, where the chief scientist is Dean Radin. Mm -hmm. um, and because I've, I've written a huge dream encyclopedia where I give people advice about how to interpret dreams and cover precognitive dreamings, I was immediately drawn, of course, to the dream expert there at the time who was compiling a dream database was studying the possibility of time dr julia mossbridge she stuck out because her book transcendent mind was the first book to be published by the american psychological association which 
acknowledge that transcendent experiences or experiences you have independent of your body and your 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 senses that happen outside your body may be real and it put her on the map really this it was it caused a lot of controversy at the time and of course i i wanted to connect with her to try and i found out about her research into precognition um i can talk about that in a minute the studies mm-hmm. that they've done on how okay. to test test precognition scientifically Mm -hmm. Um, and the results were amazing and this was done in a proper scientific way because Dr Julia Mossbridge is a scientist before she's a believer I mean her science is important she's not trying to prove anything she's just looking at the data of these experiences and then trying to come up with studies that can test precognitive abilities in people and she has come up with that I will talk about that in a minute and mm-hmm. I thought that this research has made it into scientific journals has caused quite a bit of a stir but nobody knows about it because it challenges everything we think we know about science and I thought there's a book in here and then it was like well she's a neuroscientist I'm a spiritual author who writes about the paranormal what an odd pairing but a perfect pairing I feel like <laughs> So we got together and we decided, let's try and get this mainstream. And we set up a website where her research is on there, where people can go free of charge and take part in the scientific experiment to have their precognitive abilities tested scientifically. Um, And that's what I mean, we've got over nearly 4000 people doing daily training there to test whether their precognition is real to see if we can prove it. Mm-hmm. And that's how the book the book was born. And of course, along the way, we've had so many people writing to us with stunning stories and experiences of I sense the future. I saw the future. It happened. I mean, we all know the famous stories of people, you know, dreaming of two towers being a, a collapsing before 9-11 of mm-hmm. Titanic. But these are the we decided not to include those iconic stories in the book because they're so famous to include real life stories in there of people who have sensed that their car's going to crash and it did or seen it happen or have sensed what their future might be and then it played out. And and Julia studies these people. What is going on and how can we test precognitive ability um, scientifically? And can we one day have scientifically approved precognitives? That's what she's aiming for. It's very minority report. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's something there because the, the tests that she's doing uh, with brain scans and heart rate monitors show that the, the body has an awareness of the future of something happening before it happens. And, and her studies and research has shown that. And what makes something a premonition? What are the elements of it? Well, the elements of it is that it happens usually a few days before and that somebody has, to, for it to be scientifically um, to become part of the database, to become data, to prove precognition, it must be written down or recorded before so that we have a record. There's a lot of people come with the benefit of hindsight, and unfortunately mm-hmm. that's no good for a scientist. Mm-hmm. Somebody, you know, somebody you know, had an accident and somebody will say, oh, two days ago I had a dream that would happen. That's no good to us because it's hindsight. What we want is people to write down their intuitive hunches, visions, so that we have a record with a timestamp and then within a week or so it happening any longer than that it's dodgy because there's too many other factors coming in that is a is a proper scientifically you know admissible precognition that's how and that's what the data that she's collecting of people who have the ability to sense or see something happening and then it occurs um, and there are people with this super ability who are working for major corporations for law enforcement we all know about the government uh, program, the, the Stargate program, where the government was using remote viewers to look into the future. You know, there's something there. And, um, you know, that scientists like Dr. Julia Mossbridge and, and her team are trying to find out, is it possible to train your brain in such a way that you can maybe sense the future? Of course, that throws everything we ever thought we knew about past, present and future out of the window. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what she explains. We have a whole chapter on what is time. And our, basically our understanding of time is we don't know what time is. Right. At all. Right. And experiments are showing that the past can even affect the future. The future can affect the past. There's this eternal present. That's how our minds make sense of time, because otherwise it would be just too much for us. It, it's, it's huge. And I, anyone who wants to know about the science of precognition, 
it's it it's a record in the premonition code is you will know more about where science is studying the possibility of seeing into the future than anyone on the planet we gathered it all together and every chapter every point made is footnotes references with scientific studies so can you talk a little because in the book you talk about causal loops and future push pulls and why they're important in understanding precognition and premonition because this this I mean I'm like doing you know headstands trying to wrap my mind around all of this because it's so conceptually difficult to understand Oh, tell me about it. I mean, I must admit, working with a neuroscientist who is, who is, who is, you know, the expert in in the what is in time and the possibility of time travel, I can tell you, it was a mind trick for me. It really was, and it still is. And I laugh to people because I say, you know, like the Matrix movies, it's, it's very, very difficult to understand. The Premonition Code is a bit like that, and it's become a challenge to people to really understand it. <laughs> <laughs> And if you go on the website, actually, if you go into the classroom that Dr. Mossbridge has set up, there are some lectures as well. And it's a bit like going back to school. If you want a mental workout, it, you really need to, to you know, it, it really will expand your brain. And But basically, it's the chicken and the egg thing, a causal mm-hmm. loop. What comes first? And that's what a causal loop is. You know, like when you have dominoes or um, knocking each other over. Something in the past is causing something in the future if they're arranged in a circle. What causes it? You know, wh- where's the beginning? Where's the middle? Where's the end? And, and, and it doesn't actually exist. That time doesn't actually exist like that. And that's how you could explain that it might be possible for us to glimpse a future. Um, that it is that the science is getting so close to proving this might be possible. Because time isn't linear, so really it's not the future that we're predicting or seeing. It's the eternal now um, that knows our past, present, and future. It's all like, Julia has this way of calling the long body over time. And this all sounds very, very esoteric, but it's wildly exciting. And I felt so privileged to work with someone like her um, and the credibility she brings to it. And that's why the book has had such exposure mm-hmm. um, because of her, really. Uh, and, and, and I was basically just the humble voice trying to articulate it in a way I hoped the general reader would understand. And I think I achieved it about 80 percent of the way. You know, it, you can kind of get a grip on it. But if you want to know more, go to the website and then have a go at training the scientific way to train that precognitive muscle in your brain. The scientific way, there's a six step controlled training process, mm-hmm. hard work, but that's how science is testing precognition. And every time you do a test, even if it doesn't work, that you don't actually manage to predict the future target, because there's all these uh, random images on the computer, thousands of them. Mm-hmm. And basically, what you're going to do is you're going to predict what the image is. And it's impossible. What we try to do is eliminate all possibility of fraud. All possibility of cold reading. There's no way anyone can know because it's total. That a random number generator is used to p- predict to take the to to choose the image that you're mm-hmm. working on to predict. Um, but the results are fascinating because people are when they do it every day, they are starting to improve their prediction rate. How is that happening? And this is what she's studying through the website, and that's why it's created a bit of a stir. So, so are these? So if you. St- You know, sometimes people say, and this has happened to me, like they're thinking about someone and they call or, um, you know, they were just had someone on their mind or they were just talking about them and then they run into them. Is that considered maybe a mini premonition? I know not in terms of like how you define specifically what one is. But aren't we sort of always tapping into this part of ourselves throughout the day if we're paying attention? It's a super sense that we all have. But as as time has gone on and technology and the materialistic society we live in. Damn technology. <laughs> I know, but it's, it's dulled our senses. We do have this ability. And in times past, it would have saved lives um, because if a predator was there, you'd have been able to sense it beforehand. But we, there's definitely there's too much data out there of people who have had visions, who have sensed something and it happening. Um, it, it, we definitely have it. 
and you can train it. Some people will be better than others, of course, like, you know, some people are, have, everyone can learn to play the piano, but not everyone can be a virtuoso at it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the same thing. We all have that ability and it's very, very exciting. And Dr. Julia, being a sort of a visionary scientist, she in, imagines a time when you have scientifically validated precogs advising the government about future trends with the climate and with the stock market. But that's already happening. What I found with this book, I was blown away. I came into contact with people who work for major companies as professional precognitives. It's so funny. Yeah, it's so funny because in reading the book, it was like there was like this whole secret world that companies don't talk about and that people don't talk about, about using intuitives in some form or another to help inform their works. Exactly. The work that they're doing. Julia herself works in that capacity because she she is a she, I call her the oracle. I mean, she, people she dreams for people. People will give her a problem um, or something that they want an answer to. And she because she, she dreams so vividly. There's a whole load of scientists now who are studying the irrational. Science is now studying the inner world. They've realized that you can't divorce feelings from the result, from the external that feelings and intuitions and senses must be taken into account scientifically as well. I think that's a really exciting development. And that's, of course, noetic science, which is studied at the Institute of Noetic Sciences, Mm -hmm. which is noetic means the inner world, the power of feelings and, and, and your ability to see beyond your physical senses. It sounds like such science fiction to me. It's brilliant, isn't it? I Except know. it's it's nonfiction. I know. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it was it was it was a blessing, and also you got to see from my point of view, having written anecdotally about this. I mean, I've had my flashes of intuitive insight, but nothing major. I wouldn't call myself a psychic. And what I've done these last twenty or so years is write encyclopedias about psychic abilities, and also story collections like my afterlife is real for example is a collection of near-death experiences and uh, other books I've done is about people who believe they've seen angels so I I I have had people send me thousands of stories over the years and mm-hmm. I've collated, collated them into an interesting read and say well here's the data and then suddenly I come into contact with these scientists um, um, Arnold Delorme, Dean Radin, Helena Wame, Cassandra Vierton, Penny Satori and um, people like Sam Parnia, who are researching um, uh, near-death experiences scientifically as well. Mm-hmm. I didn't know there was a whole world of scientists now who are pushing the boundaries. And, and you know, the, the conventional scientific community is, is, is quite alarmed, doesn't like it. But it's really the materialists, good. right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they say, you know, the invisible world needs to be studied. Feelings are valid. Senses, memories, like. And like Julia says, well, where do you go in your dream? What world is that? Mm-hmm. You know, everybody's had a, had a vivid dream and it feels so real. Where it, Where is your consciousness then mm-hmm. when your body's asleep? And is it not possible that that consciousness could survive bodily death or travel through past, present and future? That's the basis of the premonition code. So and what is the what is the difference between a premonition and potentially using your thoughts to determine future outcomes. Cause you can do, you can do that. We haven't talked about that yet on the show, but it is on the docket to discuss how we can use our thinking to change future outcomes. Well, it's, um, hey, let me try and explain. So we explain this in the book. If you hold a tennis ball in your hand and you let it, let the tennis ball go, the tennis ball is going to fall on the floor. Or the plate. Say you hold a plate, that's better. The plate is going to smash on the floor. However, mm-hmm. your other hand can catch the plate and and change a potential future as well. So if, as we say in the premonition code, what you see through training your precognitive ability is something you don't, don't like, there's still the opportunity for you to use that premonition and change the outcome. I mean, the future is fixed, but it's not. And that is a very mm. difficult thing to understand. Mm. And I see it like you can catch the plate to, to stop it smashing. Mm-hmm. You know, you can do that. 
But if you are seeing a, a, a premonition that you don't like, as I said, there is always the ability to change it. I think premonitions still are potential futures that, that you know, through the power of love, through the power of positive action, you can course correct. I truly believe that. So you're saying like if a number of people potentially had the premonition of the 9-11. Yes. And came forward with that. That's what IONS is doing, that they have a random number generators. And at the moment, they studied like in the 2016 election, they saw a huge, in America, they saw a huge shift. Something happened just before the results were coming out. And, and, and they, they're doing it again for 2020 to see that, they're, that there's a way that people are predicting all this. By a shift in consciousness? Is that what it is? So, so it's like a collective yeah. unconscious shift that yes. happens. Yes, and that's what they want to wow. study. Enough people provide their hunches and their dreams, and you study it to see what's happening. And what it does show, again, is that we are all interconnected. And that's such a beautiful way of looking at it. And so but, powerful. You know, our, so- our thoughts and our dreams, even our dreams, you know, our dreams are very powerful because if people are content in their dreams and, and sorting out issues in their dreams, it tends, what I've found, because I've done lots of dream books, is that working on your dreams, sometimes that's the first place to start. And I took inspiration from a tribe called the Sonoy tribe, where from the age of three or four, and they're one of the happiest tribes on earth. They're being studied, actually, by researchers, but they, they live by their dreams and they encourage their children to take charge of their dreams, to face their fears in their dreams. And the instance of depression and mental illness in that tribe is zero. Wow. Because the emphasis is uh, on the dream life almost is, is more important than their their waking life. Right. Because it, but it makes sense annoyed. because our because our. Um, our unconscious is working through all of that. I mean, the work that I do is to make the unconscious conscious in my therapy work. And so, but a dream does that on its own, right? Everything just kind of comes to the surface because you're not there filtering it with your frontal lobe. Exactly. Sort of look at your dreams, explore your dreams. And I encourage everyone to get into the habit of recalling their dreams because there, first of all, you've got a record. You can look back and see, because I, I have this now having done so much on the premonition code and that I'll dream of someone who hasn't contacted me for a while. And almost nine times out of 10, two days later, that person will out of the blue contact me. Mm. It's almost ridiculous now. Or I'll, I'll dream of someone the next day and the color that they're wearing. And I'm right. And you can call all this trivial, but I find it absolutely fascinating that somehow I'm zooming into the future with my consciousness. Um, and I don't know how we have yet to understand. There's so much we don't understand. Mm-hmm. We don't understand time. Scientists do not know. You ask the scientists, what is time? They will struggle to give you an answer. Mm-hmm. Um, and what is spirit? What is heart? What is love? All these things. And there are scientists now applying trying to study it to come to some kind of definition and conclusion to see how it can make us happier, um, healthier and more kind and compassionate to each other. Hmm. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, especially today. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. um, another question. So it seems like premonitions tend to be more negative if you I mean at least the ones that I hear about tend to be like they saw someone in an accident they saw someone dying they do because they stand out because we remember them a lot of people say to me how can I tell if it's a premonition or just anxiety right that's a big question to me and uh, there are certain ways of knowing when you have a premonition you will want to do something when you are anxious you will be trapped in indecision and fear. Mm-hmm. Premonition tends to have this calm feeling about it. A premonition does not make you anxious. It just gives you this calm certainty and you are going to want to take action in some way to do something or avoid something or warn someone. However, if it's anxiety, you'll be running around in circles trapped in anxiety and also very self-critical. So that is the big way. And it's the same 
with positive thinking you know if you have a premonition or or say you think you're going to win the lottery is that wishful thinking or is it a premonition you can tell because a premonition is always something that there is just a calm logic to it Mm -hmm. and and also it will tend to have the higher it's not just about your best interest it's about others it's it's a calm certainty you just know you you, and you don't know why you're going to do something but you just have to do it so I had that myself when I had a had a had a kind of a glimpse of the future and I just knew I had to turn left um I had to turn right instead of left as I was Mm -hmm. intended to go and I truly believe that saved my life. And it was, I had no idea why I do it. It was totally illogical because I was heading in the wrong direction. Some premonition will often require you to do something that you have no idea why. For example, people write to me that I just knew I had to put the brakes on. Hmm. I don't know why. Totally illogical. But I just did it. And you obey it because it's so powerful. And it's vivid. And it, and it makes you feel alive. And it makes you feel warm and comforted. Anxiety has exactly the opposite. So that and that's how you change the future outcome with a precognition. Yeah, listen to it. If it's if it gives you that sense of certainty and warmth, and there's no self-critical fears, doubts, and anxieties, that is a a pre- precognition. Anything else is stress, anxiety, negative thinking, low self-esteem. And so, I, I think I had a premonition, but it was it was my first one, and it was like weeks before what happened happened. So it wouldn't technically qualify as a prem- a studyable premonition, but that doesn't mean it wasn't one, correct? You, people do have premonitions that happen months before, but from a scientific perspective, they couldn't probably admit it because it's, they think there's too much information from the from the present and the coming in to filter your memory. Because, you know, we can adapt memories. Right. And that, right. that's what they would say, that, you know, that you're bringing in too much from of your awareness from the from what's happened in the intervening days <laughs> it should be even week. even if because it was with a friend I'm going to share this on my insta stories too I'll share more details it was with a friend and she it was in it came in a dream and she I didn't even remember it until I was with her and I was like oh my god I had a I think I, I I'm like here's what I saw Because for months, she's been like, I need a reading with you. And I don't really do readings. And I'm like, I don't do readings. And and then this came to me. I gave her the information. And she wrote it all down. And then it's been probably maybe two or three months. And it it has since happened. And I, when she read, I didn't even remember what I had told her. When she told me about it, I was like, yeah, but it didn't seem like totally accurate. And she was like, no, I wrote it down. Here's what you said. Here's what what happened. So it's not 100%. And this was reassuring in your book because you talk about like nothing's 100%. She's like, but it was like 95%. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I'd love it. We should have had it in the book. (laughs) But uh, yeah, I know. Gosh. Yeah. But I'll tell you, when you invite your your people who follow you to tell you their stories you will be surprised at the outcome so many people will write to you and say I had this happen or I had that happen and 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 a lot of people do it sort of quietly because they think well it may be nothing but I had this dream and then it came true that everybody's got a story about Mm -hmm. it yeah and if we could only harness that more like imagine what we could do right well that's why join the force that is the premonition code it's growing daily and it's a said you know if you want a science lesson a physics lesson a time travel lesson it's all totally free because this is done in the spirit of science it's not profit it's to find out what is going on in the human brain and can we train it can we study it what implications does this have for us as human beings do go to www.thepremonitioncode.com and you will first of all meet Dr. Julia swinging on her hammock. She's. A- <laughs> <laughs> and she would I mean, it just- doesn't get much better than swinging on a hammock, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and uh, she will take you to the virtual classrooms, and then you'll be invited to do um, the controlled precognition, scientifically controlled precognition test. And you can do it over and over and again. And if we identify people who score, I think, over 80, 50, 80% accuracy, I, I believe they will enter the precognitive hall of fame. And that's quite something. We haven't had anyone yet who scored so much above chance that they are 
you know, scientifically validated. We haven't had it yet, but we live in hope. Well, but people are getting close. Right. Hopefully the, the woman who, whose story will be on following yours on Monday will reach out because her, oh, I, she yes. had several precognitions that were totally accurate. So um, maybe she'll be your first. Oh, I'd love that. I mean, the trouble is it is difficult. I always think that psychic abilities or paranormal abilities, they're a bit like the internet. Sometimes the connection's there, sometimes it's not. And what we have found as well, that sometimes when people who are very sensitive and psychic, when they're confronted with science, it can shut them down. And it's just Mm -hmm. kind of like loosening them up and just because we say it doesn't matter. Even when you make get it wrong, it's data for us. It's right. totally anonymous unless you want to be. But of course, if you, you know, just keep it, it. It's anonymous. Just keep trying and have fun with it. Because Julia's tried to design a six six step program that we hope is fun for people to do. Because what you're going to be asked to do is you're going to be asked to draw, and the computer won't select it for you until you've completed all the steps. Right. And there's no way you can know. There's no, it's completely scientifically done. It eliminates all possibility of cold reading or fraud. And I love that. It's Mm -hmm. totally random. And uh, when people get a hit that they've gone through the scientific steps and they have drawn, say, for example, a pair of binoculars for some reason, and then the image comes up and it's a man on a mountain looking through a pair of binoculars, you would not believe how empowering that feels. Mm. Um, I've had it once that I drew something with, that looked like it was sea life. And, and yes, the image was an underwater scene. It was incredible. It was like, oh, my goodness, what am I tapping into? It's exciting and it makes you want to train more and more. And the more, and what another thing, uh, research has shown that the more you do these kind of tests, the better you get. Because it's like anything in life. When you pay attention to something, you somehow improve. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got to practice. There's no point just doing it one and then a month later, another one. You're not going to improve like anything. Daily practice. Right. It's a muscle. It. It's a muscle. And it actually is good for you. It wakes your brain up. So even if you're not getting the end result, what you will find by training that part of your brain, you are waking your mind up and you'll find it has a positive impact on all areas of your life because you become more sensitive and empathetic towards others. You become more aware of what your inner voice is saying your intuition there are all mm-hmm. these other benefits and it and don't get so hung up on results we try and get people off away from that just the fact that you are trying to train it is saying sending such a powerful message to your unconscious your conscious my your consciousness it's sending such a powerful message to your inner spirit your inner wisdom whatever mm-hmm. that you are taking it seriously and dreams also write them down every morning because your dreams get so stressed I think because people just ignore them or laugh at them but if you start taking your dreaming mind seriously it will reward you it will give you such symbolic richness well and I think too as as um it seems like I don't know at least this is my experience some people have really rich dreams that they remember and other people I don't remember a lot of my dreams but my kids have the most vivid rich dreams and so something must get shut off the older you get around yeah 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 i know kids kids are especially um uh listen to their dreams Mm -hmm. yeah Um, my son uh, came in this morning and told me he had a dream about henry danger (laughs) oh Get him to write him down. You can encourage him not to dismiss his dream world as trivial because we get all these messages that it's always oh, just a dream. It's not just no, a dream. No, that I know. Powerful, powerful message from your inner wisdom speaking to you in the language of symbols. And, you know, if you can have this wonderful dialogue between your dreaming mind, your dreaming mind is, is, is reflecting your state of mind when you're awake as well. And the more you learn about it, the richer it gets and the more rewarding and then if you get to the state when you can lucid dream when you can wake up in your dream and direct your dreams oh I haven't got to that state yet I long for the day when I do some people can but they are able to know that they're dreaming when they're dreaming yeah that's a whole nother podcast uh, topic this the lucid dreaming I wish I could do that Hmm. (laughs) Um, well this was so god just mind-bending today oh do reach out to, have you reached out to the institute of noetic sciences to get no Dean in talking? no i would oh, definitely I like to interview him he's amazing i i 
you know, he's so funny as well, but he's just really leading the way um, in this science. You know, as I said, they're scientists first, but they are taking what we believe in and study and research and write about seriously. Yeah. I'm not saying that they that they believe it, but they are saying there's too much anecdotal evidence now mm-hmm. for this not to be taken in any other field of work. This would be data what's going right. on these paranormal psychic experiences this is data it's worth studying what does it say about human potential um, right and why is it not to be believed just like any other experience exactly it, it's nothing frightening you know what why why is it dismissed and ridiculed what's going on there mm-hmm. and it's great now that you know these scientists they need our support they need, you know, because it t- takes a lot of courage for them to stick their head above the parapet and say, right. I'm actually going to research the paranormal. It takes well, a lot of courage. Well, thank you so much for your time today. And if people want to re- reach out, they can find you at the Premonition Code. Yes, yes. Right. Have fun. <laughs> tell me how you get on or tell out Amy. It's, um, it's a whole new world. If you're feeling a little bit bored or you want to wake your mind up. Go, and also, you can join a Telegram group there of people who are remote viewers. It's, again, all free of charge, and they're chatting amongst each other. It's fascinating. It's You can join a chat room and a group and a community of people who believe that maybe, just maybe, you can glimpse the future through dreams or premonitions. Hmm. Well, thank you so much, Teresa, for your time today. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Like what you heard today and want to hear more? Curious about what comes next and what it all means? You can subscribe on iTunes. Just go to podcasts and find life, death, and the space between and hit subscribe. And you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dr. Amy Robbins. Ask me any questions you might have. Let me know what else you'd love to hear about or just share your story. I can't wait to hear from you.